Hey everybody, thanks for listening to the Better Every Shift podcast. My name is Aaron Zamzow. There is Janelle Fosquets, who is the co-captain and uh, the lifeblood behind this thing, where we talk about anything from the fire service to lifestyles to uh, success training to fitness, anything and everything having to do uh, with um, just being better every single day and uh, trying to make an impact positively in you know, your crew and your community and your firehouse. So today we got a great guest today. I actually I dressed up for this. I think this is called Montana formal wear. Um, uh, Janelle, isn't that what you would think this would probably be today? Uh, hello, by the way, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I think you're looking pretty snazzy there, but I think Josh needs to weigh in on, on whether or not this is, is quite formal yeah. Well, the question be, do you have your boots on? You got to have your boots on. I do. And they, uh, the, my, well, cowboy boots, I suppose, or I have my work boots on. Is that good enough? Good okay. enough. Okay. Perfect. It's not formal so, if they're not cowboy boots, though. Well, and the reason we're talking about Montana is because we have Chief Josh Waldo, who's the fire chief of the Bozeman Fire Department in Montana. He's, um, you've also served as deputy fire chief of Oak Ridge in Tennessee and uh, your Marlowe Volunteer Fire Department. You're a graduate of the uh, National Fire Academy, EFO program. You hold uh, three professional designations. And I, I say this because, um, like, I, we were talking off camera. And I did, I mean, you're very smart, dude, very accomplished. Uh, you know, three different professional designations from the Center of Public Safety Excellence. You served on the board of directors for Montana State Fire Chiefs Association. Uh, and you are now the newly appointed second vice president um, on the board of directors for the IFC. So welcome chief. Wow. Yeah. That's, I mean, and I didn't even hit like, that's just summarizing your resume. I mean, um, you, you know, it's, you're, you're very accomplished. Uh, what was the process like, by the way, cause uh, you know, you and I spoke a while back where you were in the process of doing the vice president uh, campaigning and now you're there. So wh what's it like? What's life been like the last couple of months for you? Well, you know, it's just been busy, busy, uh, you know, still trying to run the fire department while, while seeking a, a position through an election. The cool part about it, though, was was getting to connect with so many people across this country and just talk, talk fire service. Uh, you give me way more credit than I deserve in the intro. I'm, I'm still a firefighter at heart, friend. And so to get to just talk to people about what's going on in their departments, their regions, uh, the challenges in front of the fire service, it, it's been great. And now I've got this fantastic opportunity to be in a position with the IFC to to have hopefully a positive change and, and impact some of those challenges that we have. And you mentioned too, like, you know, you're just, you're a firefighter at heart. And I think that's why you and I, we've kind of bond, bonded over many stories at, uh, through conferences and, you know, through your whole uh, campaigning too, you and I got, got to in touch again and just talked about some stuff. Um, you know, but I, one of the things that you, that, I think kind of drew, drew us together was your original, like you had a story where you had a come to Jesus kind of uh, moment where, you know, and the reason I bring it up is because it really talks about being better every shift, right? Like that's kind of the part that, that um, I don't know whether that was the kind of the, the ignition source or, or the catalyst uh, using fire terms. But do you want to uh, talk a little bit about that? I, I mean, that's, that's right away when we started doing this better every shift. I'm like, oh, we got to talk to Chief. And this is one of the reasons of many. But um, do you want to elaborate a little bit on that and kind of what yeah. we talked about? Sure. It's it's early in my career. I'm, I'm not going to date how many years back, but uh, I was new uh, on a career department, um, you know, living the dream. I, I went from a volunteer organization, got my first career job. You know, it, everything was good. And I got complacent. Uh, I really didn't take it serious. I wasn't doing all the things that I needed to do physically to make sure that I was showing up to work every day, ready to go. And uh, yeah, I remember going mutual aid uh, out in the county to a fire. And, you know, we're the city department. We're there to to help. And, and you know, everybody's looking up to us. And, mm -hmm. and I remember being in this building and I was at the time uh, probably 280 pounds. Uh, you can't tell it on this camera, but I'm only six foot tall, so I don't have a lot of frame to spread that around on. And uh, yeah, I was scared to death. Uh, I, I couldn't catch my breath. It was an extremely hot day. I'm in this building and I was trying to think every way I could to get out because physically I was not in a good spot. Yeah. 
And, um, you know, I, I remember, I, Zam, I think I've told you before, I, you know, I, I cracked the purge valve. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking for a way out. I want that, that low air alarm to go off because my pride is keeping me in there because I don't want to come out, but I want out. And, yeah. Uh, it was a gut check moment for me of, wow, I've got this fantastic opportunity, this, this career in front of me. And here I am early on and I'm, I'm this close, you know, to throwing it away. Yeah. Uh, do you think, do you think it's cause you, you know, you're young, you, th you think you're kind of invincible. You're like, Hey, I just got, you know, you, you have, you're full of, you know, they say you're full of piss and vinegar at that age and you write pride. You think that got the best of you or just, I mean, you know, is being, was being young and immature part of that, do you think? <laughs> yeah, all of the above. Let's go okay. with that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I just didn't have a lot of good role models at that point in my career to say, hey, you, you know, this isn't how you, you need to be prepared for the job. Uh, there's an expectation from your crew, from your community, uh, that when you come in, you, you're physically ready to go. And, um, you know, I, I had to have that moment where I was like, all right, listen, if we're going to do this, then I'm going to be, uh, the person that quite honestly, I expected myself to be, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to make some changes and put in some work. And, uh, you know, from there it's, I won't say it's always been perfect and it's not always been easy, but you know, there's a, there's an expectation that I think I got to meet. And I think now in my position, there's an example I got to set. Yeah. But you what think would, about what that. Does that process look like for you. Cause I yeah. think that's the hardest step for so many people is, is the first step, right? So what was your first step? Um, wow. I don't know about the first, I'll tell you a couple, you know, first it just changed with the diet talking about, okay, listen, I, I can't have biscuits and gravy every day. I can't have fried chicken for lunch every day. And, um, so it was, it was changing the diet, um, getting into an exercise routine and, and sticking with it. Uh, I thought one of the most important things I didn't realize it at the time was, was kind of finding that accountability partner at the gym to say, Oh, we're going to be there at four o'clock today. Cause if you don't have anybody there to say, yeah, I'll meet you there at four. It's real easy to just say, eh, I'll get it tomorrow. But if yeah. you know, somebody's waiting on you, I felt like that really drew me in uh, and, and held me more accountable. And so, you know, from there, um, getting around people who I think uh, were, were positive influences on me, uh, from a training standpoint or even just an operation standpoint. So it's a combination of things, uh, I think, that really helped me kind of steer the ship. And, boy, once you get in that that rhythm and you, you feel that change of, wow, I just I feel better, I sleep better, I, I have more energy, it's almost contagious. Um, yeah. You know, and it's been almost 20 years for me. And like I said, it's not always been perfect or easy, but, you know, still got up this morning and, at 4.30 and, and got a workout in and, and lunch is sitting in the refrigerator ready to go today. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's um, it's a lifestyle that becomes contagious once you see how good it, it can be. Mm -hmm. And it transfers into, it's just not, I think the biggest thing that people in the fire service really need to think about too and transferring into, you know, this better every shift concert, uh, concept is it's not just about sit-ups, crunches, bench presses, right? But you had energy to, uh, you know, your fitness changed your mental outlook on things, which meant you got all this education along the way because you had more energy, because you changed. You, you, it's like you looked in the mirror one day and said, this is I'm going the wrong direction. It's like a little slap in the head. And then you said, I'm going this direction, fitness, health, wellness. And then all of a sudden it, it transfers into education. Right. And and. Do you think that was like the pivotal part? I mean, you're you're very accomplished. You think that was kind of like what? If, what if that wouldn't have happened? Where 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 do you see your what what would have happened to you? You think? Oh man, I don't even want to think about where I would be. I, but I'll, I'll say that I think you're spot on. I think once I kind of had this this drive and and kind of reinvigorated uh, passion, boy, it drove me to do a lot of other things. You know, I I didn't go back to college till I was 27. That's after you know, my event, mm -hmm. uh, never would have thought about promoting never. I don't even think I would have thought about changing departments. Um, so yeah, it was it a, maybe a catalyst or a, a, a launching pad to, to other things in my career that really aren't even tied to, you know, physical fitness. Yeah, absolutely. It is. I mean, I think about today, um, I can tell if I don't get that, that morning workout and I'm like, well, I'll catch it in the afternoon or something. 
the energy level falls off pretty quick throughout the day versus, you know, yesterday, very productive day, but it started with a workout early in the morning. Uh, whether, you, whether that's from the energy standpoint, it's the mental aspect of just letting some stress go. It's super, super important um, to my day at this point. Yeah, and it, it molds the rest of of you. Like, you know, you say, it, I think you, you get a relationship with your body and, and that leads to a relationship with your mind and then, you know, relationship with other people also on, on top of that. And we could we could dive into that, which will probably bring you back for another episode. Janelle's already laughing at, at me because I keep doing this with all of our guests. I'm like, ah, oh, we, we, we could dig into this. But but let's fast forward. So now you you got your education, and now you're you're running your own department now in Montana. Um, what what things are you seeing out there that uh, you're making an impact on? Uh, you know where are you what's what's your focus been out there now in Montana? Speaking of formal wear, <laughs> uh, you, you know I, I don't think it, it's much different than any other chief. I'm trying to make sure that every day I come into work, I make this department a little bit better. Uh, I try to make sure that the service we provide to the community gets just a little bit better, you know, no different than physical fitness. You're not going to have these drastic changes overnight. It's a process and you got to come in every day and work at it. You know, and that starts with making sure that, that our people are taken care of, that they're physically and mentally ready to go. They've got the tools they need to do their job. Um, take checking in throughout, you know, the process uh, and seeing, you know, Hey, what, what's changing in your environment that, that I need to know about so that as the leader of this organization, I'm prepared to get you the tools, the resources that you need uh, for what's coming down the pipe. So, uh, again, buddy, every day, come in, do something uh, that's going to make it just a little bit better. And, and before you know it, you look back, I've been here seven years, and a lot of those right. those little bits are turning into to really big strides that sometimes we, we don't even realize we've made. Yeah, because I remember talking to you, you were, you were in Tennessee, and you're like, and you, were, you made the move from Tennessee, like packed up. I think your, your son's name is Wyatt, right? Isn't it Wyatt? That's right. That's yeah, right. I remember. It's my brother's name, by the way. So I'm really not that smart, but I wish I could say <laughs> I was. But, you could have yeah. left that part out, and everybody would just thought, wow, yeah. genius. I'll, I'm going to edit that out. But um, but you moved the whole family over to, to Montana, so that was also part of the stress. You're stre- you and. I mean, you had some work cut out for you too there, like, like what was the first thing that you did when you got to Montana to kind of, you know, to, to say, Hey, we're going to take this in, in this direction. Do you remember like, what was that first step? Yeah. I, I sat down and listened a lot. I'm yeah. the new person here. And I think, uh, you know, I've got, I had a vision and I had a, a kind of direction that I wanted to take this organization, but I had to put that on the shelf for a little bit. I had to come in and I had to just be, you know, ears open, took a lot of notes, asked a lot of questions um, because I needed to incorporate a lot of, you know, the members of this organization. I needed to put pieces of their vision into mine uh, so that, that there was this kind of shared buy in process. If, if you don't have kind of the collaborative uh, view from everybody, man, it's really hard to get everybody kind of rowing in the same direction. So, yeah, I did a lot of listening for the, really the first six months. Uh, sitting down and just asking people, you know, what's good? What needs improvement? What What mm-hmm. do you want to see out of this organization? What do you want? Um, and then from there, kind of crafted that into something that uh, is ever evolving, right? We're not we're not doing the exact same uh, things we were seven years ago when I got here. Fire not- tech is different now, right? Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, research and data is telling us we need to change a little bit, you know. Or, or look at things differently, right? Well, whether we're talking about fire attack, what's changed in EMS, what's changed in how we deploy resources, uh, we're in a super fast growing community. I mean, I would challenge anybody, if you're doing things exactly the way you were, you know, five, seven, ten years ago, you, you fell behind a little bit. Uh, yeah. That's just the way things are in our profession today. We've got more information than we ever have. If you use it. Right. Well, that, that's a, I think that's a whole other conversation oh, there. Whether or not it, people it, use it. <laughs> it. It. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, we I just keep creating episodes here, and, and Janelle just keeps writing these ideas down and going, just yeah, keep, stay on track, stay yeah. on track here. You well, know, but, I would I would love to know, like, how do you take all that new information that we're getting through UL and all these different groups and apply that? Like, how do you translate that? 
to the frontline firefighters? Well, you do it with training. Um, and, and honestly, I think we are blessed. When I say we, this generation of the fire service, we've been given more information, uh, more science, more data than at any other point in our history. And I don't know that we'll ever see this much new information come forward in any kind of time frame, even in the future of the fire service. So I think it's up to us as leaders in the fire service today to ensure that that stuff's getting you know, filtered down into our training programs, whether it's company level training, recruit level training, you know, we, we've got to take advantage of this. Otherwise, I think we're missing this golden opportunity to, to make our profession safer uh, and, and better from an operations standpoint. Can you so, say the people who think, uh, who feel intimidated by the research? I think yes. they think of it as, as some big thing that's beyond beyond our capabilities because it's it's the word research it's all this data how do you how do you convey how accessible it is well i think it goes back to if you look at the folks at ul um, they've done a fantastic job through partnerships with other organizations such as isfsi in, in putting this in kind of a firefighter package um, i'm sure that dr kerber has a a 600 page report on every one of these studies, but they they boil that down and give it to me in in six pages. And, and that's what firefighters need. And six minute videos is yeah. six to eight minute yeah. videos is what they are. Yeah. 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 And, and I got to be honest, if, if I think about what I was taught at the volunteer department in terms of what we call Ben resetting the fire, it's transitional attack. We just didn't know that's what it was. We didn't mm -hmm. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't understand the science behind it. We just knew that when we showed up and we dumped, you know, a pretty aggressive amount of water from the exterior before we went in and mopped it up, it was just how we did it. Now it we've works. got science that tells us, well, this is why you're doing it. This is what's happening in the building. And then you take that, you know, three or four more layers deeper uh, where they explain to us, you know, the stuff with ventilation that's going on, uh, you know, how our water disperses in the building. We probably were doing a lot of it. We just got somebody to explain it to us now. Uh, yeah. And they do it in a very good job to where we as firefighters can understand it. So let's say you got a department uh, and you're an individual because we get, well, let's say we're getting somebody's listeners like, yeah, you know what, that's great. I, but my chief, they don't buy it. They don't believe in it. That You know, our training has been a little lax. You know, you mentioned UL. I mean, and I, I think as an individual, every firefighter should go and, and um, you know, and even on, on Fire Rescue One, we got some great resources that talk about that. We have some of the best writers and, and trainers here that, that write these articles. But what, where's another place or what's another thing somebody, even if they don't feel like they got support above them, what's something else they can do like to make themselves better in that, that kind of uh, idea? So let, let's, let's take this down to the firefighter level. So if you're the firefighter in the station, you probably don't have the organizational influence at that point to walk into the chief's office and say, hey, we're going to do this different. But you do have a chance that morning at the kitchen table to bring it up and mm -hmm. be that spark, be that kind of person who brings this, this idea that says, hey, I've been reading on this. I've, I've watched this video. Could we try this today as a company? There's no danger in that, right? Go yeah, out, learn right. something new. And, and we've seen this in the fire service. You know, we act like it's a big secret, but it's not. If you get one company to try it and they have this kind of aha moment, it's contagious because then they tell the next shift or the next company. And that's how it starts, right? You get a firefighter who's willing to, to kind of do the legwork and, and understand, hey, there is a better way and, and take that to their, their captain or their lieutenant or whoever's running the, the company for that day and say, hey, I just want to try this. Um, you know, and hopefully they've got that, that, uh, that boss or crew leader for the day. Who's like, sure. You know, you, you're, you're in charge of the company drill for the day. Hey, listen, if you just go out and it's something uh, as, as simple as, Hey, we're going to change the way we load the hose, or we're going to set the nozzle pattern a little different, whatever it is. If you can do that and you made it just that significant, that little small change that day, you know, it's, it'll, it'll lead to other things as you move forward. 
trying to learn something every single day, whether, and you may learn, Hey, we're not ready for this, but, but you learn something. Right. And, and, and I think what you said too, is that's contagious. And I mean, do you believe too, and I, I know the answer to this, but elaborate on this, like change can really, can start from down like the firefighter level all the way up. But I think you said you hit it right on the head. Like, let's start by asking a question and bringing forth. Now we have all of these resources. We could say, Hey, what do you think of this and move it to the next level? Right. You know, is that, that's kind of what you're elaborating on there too, especially, right? Yeah. And, and man, you, you want to talk about for, for me and my position today, there's nothing that I get more excited about than when a company or a crew comes to me and says, Hey, we've been working on this. Can we show you something? Can we run something by you? The pride that that instills in it for me and in our organization to know that our crews are working every day to find something that helps them do their job better or makes it better for the community, man, you're going to get buy-in from me pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I know they've put their time, their effort into it. They're interested in being better. Man, as a leader, how can you not get behind that? How, how do you as a leader though, like not see in you, I, 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 we talked about pride too. Like you get pride in people bringing that to you. What about somebody who like their pride isn't allowing that to happen? You know, what would you tell that type of leader or, or someone who's got to deal with that leadership style? Yeah, that, that is tough, man. If you've got somebody who's just resistant to change or trying something new, um, it's going to be a little harder. Don't give up, right? That's the thing. You're going to have to come at it from a different angle. Maybe you got to get a little bit more information don't ever give up, though. That That's the worst thing you can do. Um, continue to read. Continue to watch videos. When you're on the drill field, try something different. Um, just keep working at it. Refine it. Uh, keep having those conversations, too, because that's where uh, people are going to need, you know, to, to feel comfortable with, hey, I can go have this conversation with this person. And even if we disagree, that's okay. We're sharing information. And, and if you keep doing that before you know it, one day, you'll never see it coming. It'll be the day that they have their aha moment and they'll be like, all right, you know what? Let's try it. Well, and you talk about sharing information. I think that's, that's one of your, um, I think specialties. I mean, that's really one of your roles in the IFC, right? Is to develop uh, the programming for, for the IFC and, and kind of uh, elaborate a little bit about, about how that passion that you have is kind of helping you, you with your new role in the IFC. Well, it's again, it's about serving this profession, right? And we got so many people who have, uh, whether it's challenges or opportunities, how you, however you want to look at it, in front of them, and they're looking to the IFC for that leadership. And so, whether it's the IFC needs to actually come up with a, a solution or an idea, or probably in more cases than not, it's saying, "Well, hey, listen, somebody over here has already got a program going for that or an idea." And serving as kind of that conduit of information flow, I think that's one of the biggest benefits of the IFC. If, if you've got something going on, let's say, in Montana, and you're like, wow, I just don't know what we're going to do about this. We need more information. But I know that you've got something going on in Wisconsin that can help. I got to make sure that I connect that the dots here and get those people together. I think that's one of the biggest roles um, in, my, in my new position. And you're in the... Are you still on the program planning committee for Rescue International? Yeah, for now I am. Yep, there'll be a transition point, but yeah, currently still sitting on the program planning committee. And what is this? so now with the new role with the IAFC? Can you give us like a little peek behind the curtain? Like, what is that like? Like, uh, what? Is, like, how much do you have to do daily, weekly, monthly to uh, just in that position as second vice president? Well, I think it depends on the person, right? And, and for me, um, I'm, I'm probably putting in uh, multiple hours a week, but that's that's the person I am. Um, you know, this is an elected position. People, you know, put me in this position because they trust me, they believe in me. And so I feel like I owe it to them, whether that's uh, communicating information, sitting down, listening to complex problems that they have, um, being on the boards. Uh, you know, we have a number of different phone calls a week. Um, it's really what you want to put into it. And for me, I'm, I'm a person who feels like uh, I've been, I've been elected into a position now. Uh, there's expectations for me to meet. 
Uh, so I, I don't really, I don't know that I have a, uh, a set limit on, Hey, this is what I'm going to do every week. It, it's very fluid, whether that's, mm-hmm. uh, answering emails, uh, being on a phone call, uh, sitting on a, on a zoom, it, you name it. Uh, it, it's pretty fluid, um, uh, from day in, day out of what's going on. And we're not even talking about budgets and strategic plans. This is just day-to-day stuff that goes on with, with being a board member. You mentioned too IFC, how we, I, I think they do, uh, you guys do a great job at doing a lot of programming. Um, there's been a lot of emphasis and focus on leadership, but where, where do you think, you know, IFC needs to maybe, uh, work on or what can they do to improve and, and, what message do you think we as a fire service need to really start to grasp better and, and, um, and, and really add to our, our education kind of component? Yeah. So, you know, the IFC has got a new strategic plan that's, that's ready to hit the streets probably uh, the first of the year. So that's going to really kind of guide us. I think everything's rooted in communication, no different than our own fire departments. Mm -hmm. Uh, We got a lot of new programs. We got a lot of existing programs. Um, whether you're trying to do something new, you're trying to make a change, uh, you, you got to have good communication. People have to know what's going on. People have to feel like they're involved in the process. So for me, it, it ends and begins with communication. And that's it's a, a strategic initiative. I can tell you that as part of the strategic plan, the IFC acknowledges that, yeah, to do anything else, we have to have strong communication uh, throughout our association. So I think for me, that, that's going to be the big one. Yeah, opening up, and I think part of that communication process too, right, is um, just letting your ego go. You know, like I, I always thought, you know, and you and I have had these conversations. Hey, let me help you. What What are you going through, and where Where do you see us going? And and I think you know, your very first thing that you did is you tried to communicate to your department, right? You said, "Hey, I'm here. Just listen. Let me tell tell me what you see. Tell me what you." you know, where you believe as a member of this organization, we need to go and, and uh, which I know you're, you're very well suited for that communication side of stuff. And I know I'm sure, you know, and knowing you personally, that's what you've been working on. I know for a lot, a lot of years. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm excited to see where you take that on the IEFC because I know you're doing that on your department level already. So, um, you know, you have to keep us posted. And again, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hit you up numerous times for this, as long as they let me do this podcast, um, <laughs> which after me just discombobulating Janelle's last name all the time, I don't know how much longer I got, but, um, but one of the cool things that we do with this is, um, we do, we, we, we put our guests on the hot seat just to keep it light and just to, um, you know, I think to, to connect more with, because sometimes, and I, and I, I think, um, you know, we've seen this a lot in our careers. Like you, you have some great mentors. I have some great mentors. I consider you one of them. And and the fact that you're, you're, like you said, you're a firefighter at heart. You know, sometimes I think it's, we don't feel like we can approach these people, you know, these chiefs, you know, um, like uh, chief Brunacini. I remember he sat down on a table with me and just talked to me for an hour because I went up and I asked him. And so we like to do these hot seat questions to, just to let everybody know, like you're chief, but like your wife doesn't listen to you sometimes, you know, your son doesn't listen to you sometimes, you have trouble with staying fit sometimes, like you like to crush a, a cocktail or two, just like everybody else, right? So you have the same problem. So we like to throw people in the hot seat and ask, ask some common questions. And these are uh, questions, sometimes they're from our readers. Uh, our listeners. And by the way, uh, please, if anybody, um, when you're listening to this, better every shift at firerescue1.com if you have hot seat questions for us. And uh, so, we, I don't, hey, these are, they're wide open and Janelle is going to lead it off with one. And so you can kind of get an idea of what we're going to ask, but um, you know, they're quick kind of things. And all right, Janelle, lead the way. All right. Little fun, little leadership. If you could have coffee with any historical figure, who would it be? Dead or alive? Oh, wow. Um, given today's climate, Martin Luther King Jr. Ooh. I like great. that. Yep. Yep. And we know the, 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 the conversation would just uh, kind of build and build and build on that. That would be an easy, easy conversation to start, right? Like, where to begin there? Um, so let's, let's, let's stay to, um, 
what's your morning routine look like? Uh, on, on most days, it's it's up. Uh, I'm an early riser, 4.30. Uh, okay. Head to the gym, get a workout. To the station, uh, ready to go somewhere 7, 7.30ish, I hope. Um, an important part for me is, is my lunch hour is blocked on my calendar. Um, I, I do that so that I have time to, to decompress, to actually eat. Um, you know, for there, it's uh, finish the day up, uh, try to get home. Sometimes I have to get that, that workout in the afternoon. There's Sometimes you get those early morning meetings that throw me off. But for the most part, you know, that's that's the day. So. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask if you're a 4 a.m. or but I, I, I knew you'd probably get to it. Um, you know, I, I honestly, I think if, if anybody's listening to this and you're struggling to try to get your workouts in, I, I mean, wouldn't you agree that's probably one of the best times because you're not getting all the calls and emails, typically not getting all those calls and emails, right? Yeah. No, no distractions. That's that's the beauty for me. Trying to do it in the middle of the day. I've tried that. The lunch hour doesn't work. The afternoon, sometimes it's it's easy to, to slack off. The morning, you have you have no barriers. Nothing. Right. That's the best yeah. time. The only people up that early are other people that are working out. <laughs> probably not. A, probably not an incorrect statement. <laughs> not a bad thing. Yeah. Janelle's got uh, the next one for you. She's all been right. On this one. Favorite concert or concert you'll never forget. Oh wow! The software doesn't usually get my iPhone or my iWatch just interrupted us there. Sorry. Uh, favorite concert. I thought your iPhone was going to answer the question for you. Right. I would have been really impressed there if Siri knew what you're. Yeah, I don't favorite. have technology dialed in that much. Um, you know, I'm a big Jamie Johnson person, and I've seen him numerous times. So I'm just going to go with Jamie Johnson. Okay, concert. Where was, hey, the, by where the, way, was the show? Uh, yeah. Uh, I've seen him in so many different places. Um, see, I, you know, I'll pick. I saw him here in uh, Montana this year. So we'll go with that one. Okay. I, you know, and I, I, I know that you're I, Montana. You mentioned that they're a, a very growing community. I know even like at one point ESPN game day was, was out there. Right. Yeah, last um, weekend. And yeah. Yep. Uh, how was that? That, that experience as fire chief. That, yeah. Amazing. I mean, super cold, but amazing. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I remember watching that, uh, and just seeing it like Montana showed up They I, I think everybody there was pretty impressed and, um, I know, you know, being in Wisconsin, I like kind of the smaller venues. I mean, Madison is a little bit bigger, but um, I remember looking at that going, oh, yeah, I can relate, man. That's well, that's a lot of fun. Great experience, not just for, for Bozeman and the university, but for the whole state. Yeah. How cool is it? You know, we've never had something like that here. So to get it, and it was it was true Montana weather. I think it was negative eight when we started that morning. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you know the, 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 the similarities between Montana and Wisconsin? No. They're places where you can get sunburn and frostbite in the same hour. Not, again, <laughs> not an incorrect statement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, real quick on game day, have you adopted the, the local team? Or you got, what's your college team? Okay, so I will always be a Tennessee fan, always. Born and raised, but yes, uh, I am a Bobcat now here for Montana State University. Okay. So we come out on the winning side, so that was a good thing. But yeah, go Cats. Thanks. Go Cats. We, we almost got him in trouble there, but he, uh, I think he recovered pretty well with, uh, you know, following up with, with the Cats. Uh, we got a couple of questions. One more hot seat for you, and then um, we'll try to finish this up. But, you know, Chief, can't thank you enough just for your insight, just for your passion to be better to uh, make the fire service better. Uh, so I, I'm kind of something that, this is a hot seat question that kind of throws everything together. If you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? Uh, I hope people that I've worked with or that have worked for me know how much I care about them, right? Uh, I've been blessed to be in leadership for probably more years than I deserve. And uh, I hope everyone that I've ever worked with knew that when I was here or when we were at work, my number one priority was them. Um, that to me would be the, the best thing. Yeah, that's I, I know that I can say yeah because I've I've known you now for about eight nine years and uh, even though we don't talk as frequently as I you know I think we probably would both like but I, whenever we've we've had conversations I knew you were right there like hey anything you ever need or um, you know so uh, 
I, again, I can't thank you enough for, for uh, joining us. And I, I want to ask one more question before, well, two. First of all, will you come back? Absolutely. Okay, good. And then second of all, you, you know, you, you really hit on, on what we're all about here is you had a, a moment in your career where you made a decision, you looked in the mirror, and it turned into this, this great career that's continually giving back to the fire service. And I think that's why a lot of us get into this, right? Pretty much all of us get in to give back. Um, what would be that one piece of information if, if somebody's there and they're maybe feeling complacent or, um, you know, if they think that, oh, yeah, chief, it's easy for you. Well, I mean, what would the one kind of parting advice you'd, you would give to that individual or that organization? You're, you're only going to grow when you get uncomfortable. That I mean, that's that's an old leadership saying, but you've got to get uncomfortable for, for a little while if you're ever going to grow. So whether we're talking about starting an exercise routine, changing a diet, changing your training program at, at your fire department, or even having a new um, perspective on your leadership and your organization, you've got to get uncomfortable and you've got to kind of take a, uh, a risk, a leap of faith, whatever you want to call it for yourself to, to grow. And I think once you do that, and you see that, you know what, it's it's not as scary as I thought. It's not as hard as I thought. Um, it becomes easier to do that throughout your career. And so, you know, for me, the, my, my first one was, well, I, I've got to start a different workout program. And, and at that point, wow, that seemed like such a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. I've gotten so comfortable now with saying I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to make myself uncomfortable. It, it almost just comes easy at this point. So yeah. the first one's hard it gets easier with every time you do it. So, so get comfortable at getting uncomfortable. You got it. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think a t-shirt's coming out with that one. I th uh, that could be on <laughs> one of our, or at least top five slogans that we've had so far on the show. So, um, well, I think, again, I think it's been around, so I don't get credit for that. I've, I've heard that somewhere and I just stole it. So, uh, but yeah. yeah, but it makes, it makes total sense. And, and uh, again, uh, for, for your uh, thank you for your honesty. Thanks for your passion. And we'll have you back again. Um, I might not be here. Someone else might be in my place. But, um, um, We're not replacing you, Aaron. I know. I know. Never. I can't, I guess. Right? You got to have the, the entertainment value on it. But thanks so much, Chief. Always good to see you. And uh, we'll uh, look forward to having you on again sometime soon. Yeah, my pleasure. Stay safe out there. Thanks, Chief. Got it. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Remember, do what you can every single day to be better every shift.